What's up everybody, Chris here, and today we're going to take a look at exporting VX1000 footage out of Premiere Pro uh, as an HD 72060p QuickTime movie. Um, and with this QuickTime movie, you can then take it over to YouTube, upload it, and have it play on YouTube as a 72060p video. Um, so first off, why would you even want to do this with VX1000 footage? Why do you want to take the standard definition uh, footage and put it into an HD timeline like this. And the reason that I like doing this is um, for those that film VX, you're probably familiar with watching your footage back through your viewfinder after you film something. And you're probably familiar with that image clarity that it has looking straight off the tape when you watch something back through the camera like that. Yeah. It just has this uh, crystal clear image to it. And I've noticed once you upload footage and you watch it and a standard definition timeline, it doesn't have that same image quality any longer. But if you take that VX footage and you toss it into a 60p timeline, it does have that image quality again. So I like the 60p because it just looks the most like that tape image when you look through the viewfinder of the VX. So yeah, again, if you film VX, that probably makes sense. But that's all I'm trying to do is replicate that, that look. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to do this um, with the assumption that you're already familiar with Premiere Pro. So you've been using it to edit your projects and yeah, you know how to use it. And this video is for those that are just ready to take their VX footage and export it to YouTube in 60p. So to start, um, basically just going to do it from the very beginning. Um, I have these three clips right here with Josh. Uh, kick flip a gap, front shove a gap, and nollie through this tree. And what I'm going to do is just begin by taking the very first clip of my edit, which I'm going to use this kickflip clip here. I'm going to take it, set my in marker, my out marker, and then I'm going to drag it over into the timeline. When I drop this into the timeline, it's going to automatically set the sequence settings for this project. So obviously this is VX footage, so it's created it in the standard definition VX dimensions here. So let's go up to our sequence settings here under sequence and take a look what that means. So as you can see it's set to 29.97 frames a second which is you know 30 frames which the VX shoots in. Everything else is set up in accordance to that. So we're gonna come back out to our sequence here. All right. First clips in. Let's get the shove. So we'll set our markers for a cut shove. All right, we'll bring that in. And then nolly through the tree, set our markers. I for in, O for out for our markers. All right, and now we have these three clips down here in the timeline, and we've built this edit. So let's just check the edit. All right, so we've got our edit built here now. And the edit that you have obviously could be much more complex than this with lots of different things going on in your edit. Um, but for the sake of just showing you how to do this quickly, these three clips, this short little edit, can represent whatever edit it is that you have that you need to get to YouTube. So you may have noticed um, that I have my zoom level set to 50% here up in the program panel. And the reason I do this is when I'm editing something for Instagram, I like to edit it with a smaller screen like this. So I set it at 50 because uh, it just looks closer to the size it's going to be when you actually watch it on the phone. So yeah, I just like to edit Insta stuff like that for the most part. Um, for this though, we're going to set to fit and just bring that up to a larger size, which is probably how you're editing. Okay, so before we move forward, I just kind of want to give you a rundown of what we're going to do here. Um, we're going to change the sequence settings of the timeline here that we built this project in. And we're going to change the sequence settings to that of the 60p timeline that we need to export for YouTube. Um, so what I normally do though is I make a second sequence. I don't want to change the sequence settings of the sequence that I built the project in. I just want to keep this as is in the original VX sequence settings. Um, this is because when I actually edit VX footage, I want to edit it here in the VX dimensions. I don't want to edit it in the HD timeline. So if I was to change this sequence here that I built my project to the HD timeline, I would lose this VX uh, timeline that I've built. We could always switch the sequence settings back, but 
To avoid this, I just make a new sequence. So what I'm going to do is come up here to File, New, and Sequence. I'm going to say OK. And now I have a second sequence that's built here. Right here you can see I can go back to the original one that we built the edit in, and now we have the second sequence here. And what I'm going to do is change the sequence settings. So to do this, I'm going to go up to Sequence, Sequence Settings, and we're going to start by changing the editing mode to Custom. All right, and now we're going to change the time base here to 59.94 frames per second. We move down to frame size now and change the horizontal to 960 and then the vertical to 720. The next thing we're going to do is come down here to pixel aspect ratio. We're going to open this up and we're going to choose HD anamorphic 1080. Once we change that, you can see that this has changed to 16 by 9, which is the HD dimensions that we need. All right, under fields, we're going to leave it as no fields. And then under display format, that has auto set to 59.94 frames per second. We're going to leave that. Everything else down here, we're going to leave as is too. Um, so the only things that we've had to change are the editing mode to custom. We changed the time base to 59.94 frames per second. We changed the frame size and we changed the pixel aspect ratio. Everything else is sitting as is. We're going to say OK. And now this new sequence that we've created is the 72060p timeline that we are going to use to export our VX clips. So to do this, we're going to come back to the original sequence that we built here. I'm going to hit Command A to highlight all the clips. And then I'm going to hit Command C to copy it. Now I'm going to go over to the new sequence that we created. And I'm going to hit Command V, which is going to paste my clips into the timeline. We zoom in, you can see that the edit is now here in this HD timeline. All right, so the next thing we need to do is adjust the size of our clips. As you can see, the VX footage is smaller inside of this, uh, this new 16x9 sequence that we've made. So what we need to do is size up the clips of our project. And the way we do that is by adjusting the scale of each clip. So to begin, we're going to come down and click on the first clip here in our project and highlight it. From here, we're going to go up into the source panel, which is our top left panel here. And we're going to choose effect controls. Under effect controls, um, there's multiple folders here with different things that you can do. Um, the first one here is motion. If we select motion and open it up, you can see that we have position and scale right here. So the position is where the clip is sitting inside of the sequence. And then the scale is the size of the clip. So we need to adjust the scale. So to size it up, I could simply mouse over the end of the 100 here, hold down and scroll to the right, and it'll size it up. And I can go to the left and size it down. So if I want to do it this way, I can, which it looks like at 150 is the correct size it needs to be. Or I'm going to hit Command-V to back up. I know that it's going to need to be 150, so I could simply click on it and type in 150 on the keyboard, hit Enter, and size it up. So from here, we're going to come back over to the sequence. And you can see this clip is now the size we need it to be. The other clips here are still small. And that means we need to size those up too. So the quick way to size up all the other clips in your project is by going back to the one that we changed here, highlighting it again, going back under Effect Controls. This time, we're going to click on Motion. I'm going to hold down Control and click Motion. And I'm going to Copy. So by hitting copy, it's going to copy the scale that we've set to this clip. And that scale is what we need these other clips to be set at as well. So now that we've copied, we're going to come back into the sequence here. And I'm going to highlight these clips that I need to size up. And I just go up to edit, and I hit paste. And that is going to paste the same scale as this clip to these clips. So now we have our edit complete. It's sized up, and it's in the 60p timeline. So now it's ready to go to YouTube. And one thing I have to point out, when you watch the VX footage in this timeline like this, you'll notice when you pause, it's really crispy, and it looks nice. But when it's playing, it kind of has a haze to it. Know that that haze is not going to be there when you actually export it out. It's only when you're actually editing or moving the footage around here in this HD timeline that it appears that way. So just know that. And if you pause it, you can see that it's nice and crispy, ready to go. 
So now we have the project in the HD timeline ready to go. All we need to do now is export it out and upload it to YouTube. So the way we're going to do this, first and foremost, is we need to set markers here in the timeline. So by setting markers, it's going to identify the specific section of the sequence that we want to export out. And that specific section of the sequence is our project that we have here. So what I'm going to do is go to the very beginning of the projects and I'm going to hit I on my keyboard for in and it sets an endpoint. I'm going to drag it to where it locks at the very beginning of the first clip. And I'm going to go to the end and hit O on the keyboard, which is for out, and do the same thing. Drag that out point to where it locks at the very end. So now I have it set in my sequence, the specific chunk here that I want to export out. And this is useful if you had been building a project or you had scrap clips or multiple projects in one timeline. You can just export out the little part that you need to. So there are two ways that we can get to our export settings to export this project out. The first is uh, by going up to File and choosing Export and then selecting Media. This opens up the export settings. Uh, we're going to cancel this. I'm going to show you the other way, which is by using the keyboard shortcut. Uh, I'm going to hit Command M and that opens up the export settings. So once we're in the export settings here, there's only a few things here that we need to change. Um, the first is we're going to change the format here. Right now it's set to QuickTime and what we're going to do is select H.264 and then the preset we need to make sure that it's set to match source and it's auto adjusted to that so we're going to leave it as is. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is come down to output name and click on it. And I'm going to name this Josh Edit. And I'm going to throw a YT on there for YouTube. I'm going to choose the desktop as the location to where I want to save it. And I'm not going to mess with the file format. I'm going to click Save. And all this other stuff here, we're leaving it as is. We're not making any changes to anything else. We just needed to change the format to H.264 and make sure the preset matches the source, which it does. Now that we've done this, we're just going to hit export, and we're going to allow this to do its thing. It's going to take a moment. All right, so that's finished exporting. So the next thing we can do is hide Premiere Pro, take a look on our desktop, and there's our... And as you can see, it's in 72060p now. So now you can take the edit and go over to YouTube and upload it. Um, and once you upload to YouTube, you just want to double check that it is um, allowing you to select 72060p as one of the uh, options. So that basically will confirm to you that it's uploaded correctly. So that's basically it. As you guys can see, it's pretty simple. Um, if you have any other questions about this, please feel free to uh, yeah, comment below or hit me up on Instagram. Um, happy to help as much as I can. And if you guys have any other, uh, you know, Premiere Pro questions, VX stuff like this, please feel free to let me know and I'll do my best to uh, put some stuff together for you guys here in the future. All right, so that's it. Coming to you from Long Beach, wherever you guys are at. Much love. Peace.